funny that it's uh, that it's S and implied testing positive or oh. something, isn't it? <laughs> Pull your finger out of your ass. Jeez. This is my first ever football jumper. My three goat votes, I should say. My three goats. My three votes <laughs> for three Charlie. Votes. For Char oh, top of the world, <laughs> mate. What a time to be alive. I look a bit like Nick Bellick from uh, GTA 4, I feel, with this. That could, that could get dangerous. What a fun weekend of football that was. That's an interesting way to describe it, mate. Oh, um, a lot has happened since Friday night. We uh, all started with your boys and Saturday, 24 hours later, we the uh, we outdid you in the disappointment category and just taking the piss out of footy. So, But let's start on Friday night. We don't have to. <laughs> no, we can. We can skip. No, let's start. Let's start. Oh, it was... It's got, we like to get Richmond out of the way early. Yeah, we always do. Normally... Talk. Actually, no, you know what? This year we have been just talking shit about Richmond every yeah. time we bring them up. So it's you deserve it. After. No, absolutely. Yeah. That was one of the most awful displays of football I've ever seen from Richmond. Ever. Um, That's a big call. Recently. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I've seen a lot worse. Yeah. Recently. Um, the, f the first quarter actually wasn't as lopsided as it may appear. I think we got, we got one goal taken away from what I think was a dodgy free kick after Jack Rowell kicked a goal. A good goal too. It was a great goal. I thought it should have been a war. I didn't think it should have been paid a free kick against Tom Lynch in the goal square, but that's it is what it is. And then another soft one I thought was given away against Dylan Grimes right in the goal square for the Giants and Himmelberg kicked another one. So you get rid of, you know, you put those ones back in their place where they were supposed to be and first quarter looks a bit different. Um, but then from then on, there was no excuse as, what to, as to what happened. They just completely outplayed us. And considering the Giants have a lot of people out at the moment, they are looking very, very scary. Probably the most informed team in the competition at the moment. They're um, they're flying and charging towards finals. If everyone, if anyone ever doubted them and their finals capability, they're very wrong. They're um, they're looking very good. And what Taranto kick four went forward, um, best on ground performance. He was he was super, um, and they just had winners like the park. Jacob Hopper was great. Josh Kelly, um, Himmelberg was good as you mentioned before. So yeah, they're they're primed and, and ready to go. So I think they, they could um, they could really make a, a big impact in the finals. They could honestly be a smoky for the flag. You're looking at all these top teams at the moment, but we've seen someone come from outside the top four before and win it. Yeah. If anyone's going to do it that's sitting outside that top four at the moment, it is the Giants with the form that they're in. And they've got players missing as well. Their best player was on the sidelines on the weekend in Toby Green. And yeah, what what the ca their capabilities are, are honestly quite scary looking, yep. going forward. Let's stay on the Richmond team. Okay. What's... Uh, Dion Prestia was in the news today. You, uh, you want to naughty, inform, naughty inform us about that? Yeah, so the meatball was uh, had a photo taken of him at the uh, infamous Richmond pub crawl, which we, uh, if we haven't if you haven't seen it in the news, there was a pub crawl of a bunch of blokes walking up and down, I believe Swan Street, but it was in Richmond regardless, and going up to pubs, getting takeaway beers, and there was a congregation in large numbers, which obviously goes against our lockdown laws at the moment and puts the rest of Victoria... Um, in harm's way, for a lack of a better word. But well, we just got announced today that we're extending the lockdown and we're now we've got a curfew, Absolutely. which is what we had this time last year. And so I never thought we'd see a curfew no. again. It honestly makes us feel like we're in war times almost yeah. with the curfew in place. But yes, the curfew is in place and this is one of the reasons, not the only one, but this pub crawl doesn't help. And Prestio had a photo of taken of him amongst it mm. um so there was an investigation from both the club and the afl into what he was doing there was he a part of it etc etc i do believe all charges will be dropped as Presti has claimed that he was on his way to get food he was walking from his house to pick up food on swan street and simply top stopped to take a snap with a um either a fan or a friend whatever it might have been um and went about his merry way so he wasn't actually involved in the pub crawl and a, an investigation from the afl and the tigers um proved this so yep. he's gotten away with it but geez it's not a good look especially after the loss that we had on friday night it doesn't make uh, our publicity any better no no you guys are sort of limping towards the end of the season now it's uh Absolutely. one week to go and yeah you guys are you've had a bad season very bad season for for a reigning premier um, i think the club's almost relieved that we're, we're finished now like we've got yeah. one left obviously but i think they're almost relieved i mean i know the commentators said it a lot but it would add up. But the last four years or so, yeah. we've gone deep into September. Had a lesser preseason than than you know some clubs, um, especially last year, finishing late October. They did limp. They just limped through the last half of the they season. They looked spent. They looked tired. They looked ruined. Um, 
depleted, obviously, with injuries, not the way the only club, but it doesn't help either. Um, I think they were happy to see the season end, and I don't think the fans are, definitely not. It's hard to, not hard, that's the wrong word. It should be grateful that we're, you know, the reigning premiers, but to go from reigning premiers to, yeah, not even finishing in the eight is uh, disappointing, mm. but... Not many teams do it. No, not many do, mm. not many do. I mean, look, people do fall from grace, and I don't think that's where we are where we are at yet, but we obviously have fallen from grace if you compare to where we were last year. So disappointing, yeah. but I do think we'll be back. Yeah, I think you, I think you will. you got yeah, you got a lot of players to come back, and you've got a really good draft hand as well, so you can easily spike back up with the talent you bring in. I've got so. two first-rounders and two second-rounders, I'm yep. pretty sure, so yep. it's pretty good. Yeah, I think you'll be back for sure. I think if you have another bad season, though, next season, then it's probably curtains on your... Yeah, that'd be done. Your era. Yeah, that would be done. And you know what? Yeah. I was, I, I messaged you this actually after the game because I was I was pretty upset the night of. Um, as you can imagine, I'm pretty sure all Richmond supporters would have been. But I took a moment when I woke up the next morning just to be a little bit more, I guess, grateful for what I've seen instead of just try and calm down a little bit. Yeah. And if this is to be the end and it's all said and done after this, I guess I really can't complain. If I go back to 2016 where we were at and what I thought I was going to see, it wasn't what I have seen. So... I'm pretty grateful for what I've seen, but yeah, obviously not a great way to finish the season regardless. No, not at all. Um, a team that is finishing the season off very well, the Essendon Footy Club. They uh, they cannot be ignored here on the podcast. They are, they're obviously a team that we uh, we love to take the piss out of. and I mean, it's just the supporters, we know a lot of them and... Yeah, they're, they're not afraid to give it to us, so we just give it back. But, yeah, geez, they're, they're playing some great footy and um, I think they should, they're they going to make finals, aren't they? Something's going to have to be go dramatically wrong I for them not to make to, it. They'd have to lose to the Pies yep. and West Coast would have to win, I think, by a reasonable margin to yep. build percentage back up. So, yeah, unlikely they'll miss the finals at this point. Um, yep. And I think, I mean, maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I think the only word that we can really use for them on the podcast at this point in time is admiration. They're... I hate to say it, it burns me inside to say it. Like you said, Marcus, we do take the piss out of the Bombers a lot, but you said it yourself, they looked like a side that really wanted to play finals on the weekend and they just did what they had to do and they've been doing so all year. We tipped them to be bottom of the ladder and they're going to play finals ahead mm-hmm. of both our clubs yep. and there's a bit of egg in our face after what we said earlier in the year. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Um, no one saw this coming at all. Um, yeah, as I said, yeah. I wouldn't down the bottom of the ladder in our predictions. So, um, and it's not just they're not just scraping through and getting these lucky wins. Like they're they're playing some fantastic footy. Um, they were dominant against the Gold Coast on the weekend. Um, they they've beaten some some teams comprehensively as well. That's why their percentage is so strong. Um, so they're they're flying, and if they get, they can get anyone on their day. I, I think feel. they've won eight games by ten goals. Or- yeah, I think at this stage it was something crazy like no, that. No, I think I don't think it's that many, but it might have been it was a handful. A few. It yeah, was a few. so the games that they have lost this season though have been to those top four teams, like the top, 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 top four, top six. So, um, and then Richmond and Carlton. Yeah, which is bizarre, <laughs> absolutely bizarre. But um, if they can bridge the gap there, oh, they're a big chance to cause some damage in the finals. This is probably being a bit uh, a bit far fetched here, but. Could they do what the Bulldogs did in 2016 and Richmond did in 2017? I know we both hate to see it happening, but... Just the thought of that makes me makes me shiver. Could it? Ha- could they be that team that just no one expected to be there? And they've could, absolutely. They're, they're, probably, they're probably playing similar to what the Dogs are playing that year as well. And no one gave them... No, no one really thought of them as an... Op- Although, saying that, the Bulldogs, I think they were always playing finals that year. Yeah, they, but, I mean, they, but played, yeah, they made... They finished but, seventh, though. So but they were never a premiership, them. like... Contender. No, no, never. Yeah. Never. And then it was just, I mean, it all comes down to how good you play in finals. And I mean, yep. R- Richmond have showed that we weren't the best side every year we won it. We won it. We just were good in finals. In 2018, when we were the best team in the comp, we didn't win it. So it just yeah. goes to show that it doesn't matter where you're at throughout the year. It really depends on if you make the eight. It just depends on how well you play in finals. Yep. And the form that Essendon's in at the moment, look unreal. Yeah. I think the, the sky's the limit for them at the moment. Yeah. I feel like, though, if they. If they get a Port Adelaide or a Brisbane first week of the finals on their home decks, it's almost it's almost going to be too much for them. I think I do see it being a hard, especially job. with the the home fans. Um, both sets of supporters are pretty fierce, so I feel like that would probably be worst case scenario for the Bombers if they drew one of those teams in the first week. But I mean, I, I feel like if they if they get a Sydney who won't have a home ground advantage, they could easily knock them off. Um, and even the Giants as well. So and break their streak. Exactly. So who knows? Who knows? 
Um, be interesting. It's going to be very exciting. They, as said, they play Collingwood this week, who they should knock off, and so that that top sp- top eight spot up. So it's uh, it's huge for the Bombers. It's huge. Um, as we said, as much as we like to take the piss out of them, they're they're playing some good footy. Incredible. Um, uh, sad news. Eddie Betts retired just tonight. Well, it was it was coming for a few days, but um, officially announced tonight. Uh, just before we started recording. Obviously, Mark Murphy retired last week. Now, Eddie Betts this week. It's a tough... It's a, geez, it, being a Carlton supporter, it just gets harder and harder every week. Um, terrible, terrible, pathetic performance on the weekend in Murph's last game, in his 300th game. So, now Eddie Betts has retired and he, he'll play his 350th this weekend in his final game. Um, I mean, he's not just a legend of Carlton, he's a legend of the game. Arguably the best small forward we've ever seen. Um, one of the best Indigenous players we've ever seen. Um, all the above. All the above. He's just an ornament to the game. Um, one of the most loved players, um, not just from a Carlton perspective, but in the AFL in general. You couldn't hate Eddie Betts. Um, our Carlton fans were absolutely distraught when he left us to go to Adelaide for a few years and then came back last year, which was great. Um, and, yeah, definitely definitely the most loved player I think I've ever come across in my time supporting the Blues. Um, he was just admired by every single fan. And what he was able to do on the field was um, incredible. And he was still doing it this year. You know, still kicking goals out of, out of his ass from the boundary. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to be sad with no Eddie bets in the competition. Um, but at the same time, all you can do is just Smile and be grateful for all the memories that he brought to the game and um, put a lot of smiles on, on Carlton supporter faces, that's for sure. Absolutely. He's one of those players that you can't explain it really, but you just can't hate him. No. I think Titus O'Reilly put it perfectly when he said the biggest compliment he can give to Eddie Betts is that he played for Adelaide and Carlton and still didn't hate him. And <laughs> he still he still really liked him, actually, was what he actually said. So just goes to prove that, yeah, he was such a lovable character on the field and even off the field and it, there's not much more that can be said, you know, compared to what you've already just mentioned before. But yep. yeah, he was an incredible player, and he will be missed in the game of footy. But no doubt, his personality will stick around, and we'll see a lot more of Eddie Betts in the future. Definitely, I think he'll, um, I think he'll hang around and, and do some, um, some mentoring, and um, he'll probably run his own Indigenous community program, and still have he, have his head around the AFL. And um, yeah, going to be uh, sorely missed though on the footy field, that's for sure. Um. Back to the back to the footy and the finals contenders. Giants, as we mentioned before, looking very scary after their big win against you blokes. Um, it's two in a row now for them, though. You're yeah. They beat you long the week before. Yeah, absolutely. With, with half their side. Exactly. And they had no Toby Green against you blokes, too. So he comes back this week. They play the also very impressive Carlton Football Club. <laughs> um, no. No, no. That almost hurt you to say they, that. They, they, should, they should rest all their players this week. And... And they'll still get a 10-goal win. Um, Just give them a good wait, break before finals and yeah, have to scrap the pre-finals exactly. by. Well, while we're on that, I think a lot of teams might rest a lot of players this weekend, or the yeah. finals teams anyway. I think they will. Like yeah. The teams that are sort of locked into place, so it doesn't really yep. make a difference where they finish, I reckon they will because there's no buy now. No. So a lot of players are going to be sore and all the rest of it. You don't want that for finals. No. Well, I know Sydney rested Buddy last week because they there was a lot of uncertainty around it, so that paid off for him. He got a rest in. But yeah, I think there's. I think Giants could be one of those teams that that rest some players. As I said, they're playing Carlton, who um, are pretty much a, a VFL team. And then you've got, um, <laughs> then, you've got <laughs> then you've got. Um, oh, I've lost my train of thought now. <laughs> Richmond, have Hawthorne. Richmond have the Hawks. Yeah, but you're not um, not the team playing finals, though. Well, we're still a chance, technically. <laughs> Going to rest some players. I think if, if Essendon rest a few players and Collingwood beat them by ten goals, and Richmond beat the Hawks by I think a hundred points plus, we'll give or take. <laughs> uh, we, we'll just slot in the finals, and I think Brisbane have to beat West Coast as well, and then we'll, we'll just slot in the finals. So we're still a chance, mate. Never say die. Jeez, well, man, you're nothing without hope, as they say. <laughs> um, I'm clinging on. <laughs> Speaking of teams, though, that are wildly out of form, and that is the Western Bulldogs. Um, they lost to Essendon the week before, and then they got knocked off by the Hawks, who have been in flying form themselves. So, are you we are we concerned about the dogs? A little bit now. Uh, I think after the Essendon loss, I wasn't. 
But yeah, it's almost yawn now. Good time, mate. Yeah, it's been a long day. It's been a long day. <laughs> but um, the, yeah, this one's a bit of a concern for me. They lost by twenty seven points. They scored five goals to the game. Mm. It was down in Tassie, I believe. Yep. Um, but regardless, they should be knocking off a team like Hawthorne. And as scary as it may sound, or as wild as it may sound, they still might finish outside the top four, considering yep. they were top two almost all year. If they don't get a win this weekend, and the form that they're in, they might not. It's crazy. I could not believe that scoreline when I when I saw it. Um, but on the other side of that, the Hawks, uh, since Clarko got announced that he wasn't going to be coaching them again, they've been on fire. They're almost like they're playing for him. Well, Clarko would be spewing that they've found this form yeah, late in the year. Imagine if they're doing true. this all year. He wouldn't, yeah. He'd probably still be in a job. Yeah, exactly right. So it's going to be interesting to see how they, if they can perform like this next year when Mitchell's the full-time coach. But I think they'll be able to. Yeah, I mean, they, they look like they've got a really good young list and developing really nicely. Um, I think that's three in a row for them, and um, nah, they're doing doing really well. But yeah, as I spoke about with the dogs, I don't know. I'm, I would be concerned if I was a Bulldog supporter, that's for sure. And they got Port Adelaide Friday night, um, which is going to be a great game. If they but lose their double chance, yeah. then I don't think the Bulldogs no, are a I contender. I don't think they can win it no. if they finish outside the top four. Um and that's not to say another side of outside the top four couldn't do it. I just think the Dogs have lost form at the wrong time. Yeah, they have. There's, you talk about teams finding form at the right time of the year. I think the Dogs are losing it at the wrong time. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how they go going forward. Yeah. Um, the Derby. The Derby. The Derby, whatever they call it. We made a choice there. last week. I can't it? remember what it was. was it de- I think it was a Derby. Yeah, we'll say Derby. Derby. Next week, yeah, we'll say Derby. Derby. We're going to re-listen to our podcast, I think. Anyway, it was one of the best games all season. Um probably one of the best derbies of all time. It was um, insane. The atmosphere, there was a 50-plus thousand crowd there. Um, the intensity was finals-like. Both teams were putting their bodies on the line, um, playing for their lives. West Coast were coming at Frio very hard. Um, it was it was a great game to watch. Um, Caleb Sarong, what a player. He's going to be a superstar when yep. he's a bit older. I mean, he already is a gun now, but imagine in a couple of years' time. A bit more development, a few more pre-seasons. The, yeah, I've said it before already, but the sky's the limit yep. with this guy. He's a gun. He's a gun. That goal he kicked from from the boundary late in that game to pretty much seal it for him was uh, was huge. Um, but West Coast, they've just hit an, hit an absolute wall. They're probably not going to play finals. No, nah, I don't think they will. I no. really don't think they will. And I mean, look, they probably don't deserve to either. No. But... Talk about fall from grace. Mm. They've still got a great side, though. I I so I think I don't, I'm, they're another side that I don't think will be down much longer. Like I think next year, if they have a bit more, you know, a bit more of a rest, to have some players come back, I think they could start causing damage again. But they'd be pretty disappointed with how this year's finished. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they they have had a lot of injuries as well. Like their midfield's been decimated. Um, as soon as one midf- one midfielder comes back in, another one gets injured. So they've had no consistency through there, but. Yeah, I don't know. Do they bounce back next year? Um, like like, healthy, like a Richmond? I think mm. they can. Yeah, but jeez. They could all learn to win away from home. Yeah, but then I think that is true. But they've also got a lot of ageing stars as well. Like Josh Kennedy's getting no younger. He, he Pro- might even retire. He, he could, I reckon he's probably got one more in him. Mm. I don't know how he's feeling personally, obviously, but yeah. I think from what I've seen, he could play one more year. I know Jack Rewalt's another old forward that's playing one more year. So, I mean, I don't see why he wouldn't, mm. but... The body's a bit sore, and yeah, you're right. And he's every chance to retire, and then, but I think they've got some other tall forwards that are they're coming up and yeah, doing yeah, some good definitely. things. So I, look, I, I do see them bouncing back personally um, with, a, with a healthy list, and if they can stay healthy, they'll. I think they'll be all right. But concerning signs, nonetheless. Yeah. Just while we're on WA, the finals have to be there in the grand final. I it's, think so. It's, it's looking likely now, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I mean, not likely. It's pretty much guaranteed that's going to happen. Yeah, exactly right. I mean, without getting political and, you know, getting into topics that aren't footy with the uh, 69 people engagement party that happened on the weekend and Melbourne now going into extended lockdown with curfews because of it. Uh, I did not see it happening. It's also episode 69. We didn't mention that. It is also 60. Yeah. yeah, Episode 69. Nice. And it also, uh, yeah, it reflects the, uh, the number of people that attended the uh, engagement party that has now sent Melbourne into an even bigger lockdown. So thanks for that, everybody there that was there and being completely selfish, not thinking of anybody else. Um, definitely wasn't thinking about the football season because that's definitely not happening in Melbourne anymore. No, definitely not. Uh, and that, look, I'm, I'm not saying it's because of footy. That's disappointing in general. But I think going back to the finals topic, yeah, the finals will have to be in WA. They've done too much for us this year. Last yep. year, I was 
very against them getting the final series. But um, after what we've seen this year, you can't ignore them. And it probably works out well because West Coast and Frio probably aren't, well, yeah, most likely both of them aren't going to be in the finals. Um, so there's no real advantage there, is there? Like Not last year where Brisbane had that Gabba advantage through the finals, um, which they, 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 sh- they should have won the premiership, really, when you got that much of an advantage. Um, well, they didn't have Dustin Martin. No. So. <laughs> they didn't. But they did have the Brownlow medalist. They did. So, they did. Um, so, yeah, that, that works out well for the AFL, I reckon. Um, but, yeah. And it's uh, crowds. Like, yeah, they've got they a fantastic you, stadium. It's, bu- it's awesome. Yeah. It, I've got to say, it's beautiful. But Great it atmosphere. Beautiful. It really is. Yeah. So I think they're going to share it with Adelaide, what the talk is, um, because there was a rule like where, where some... I think... So if Port Adelaide get an away game, like an away final, they can't play that game at the Adelaide Oval. And oh, right. if they get a home... Obviously, if they get a home final, they can go to Adelaide Oval. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, so I think that's just going to be shared along the, the west coast of Australia. And that makes sense. They're the two yeah. states that have sort of carried the rest along when everyone was going through their various lockdowns and COVID scenarios. So I think that's probably a good result for footy just in general. And I reckon in 2022, if it's uh, possible, Pressure Point should organise a, a field trip down there and go to a game at Optus Stadium. Absolutely, we should. We'll have to Absolutely. book that in. Absolutely. We'll bring all our sponsors and everyone come along. And all our special guests that we've had on too. Absolutely, we'll make everybody. It a, make it a big uh, big party. Um, <laughs> dipping into the funds, right? <laughs> really dipping into the funds with that one. But we'll get them. We'll get everybody. Well, speaking of funds, what about the MRO? Yeah, look, I know I said I ranted about him last week and I had to rant about him again this week because the inconsistencies are killing me at the moment. They're absolutely killing me. I don't know if you saw, did, it, did you see the Dom Sheed? How many weeks do you reckon he got for it? Zero. None. Mm. Got a fine. Mm. He deliberately punched yeah. a player in the gut. Yeah. Now, I know last week it was all about head knocks, but how can you punch a player square in the gut intentionally? They graded it intentional and not give him a week suspension. Do you want to rule out people getting hit or do you not want to do that? I, I don't know what their It's only, because, their it's only because you didn't get him in the head. That yeah, I mean, mm. if you hit him in the head, that's six weeks. Yeah. But what's the difference? Because you hit him in the head, it's ridiculous. You shouldn't be able to hit anybody at all, mm. and say the game's getting soft, whatever you want yeah. to say. But they're trying to rule out punching and people doing that stuff. Mm. A fine's not going to stop people from doing that. Not someone like Dom Sheed, who's been no. around for that long, and a three thousand dollar fine for him is chump change. Yeah, exactly right. But they did get. I feel like they got the Tom Hawkins one right. I did think they got that. Yeah. These dangerous tackles are getting a little bit out of control for mine. Yeah, there's. Sometimes when it's a sling and you're dumping them, I think that's fine. But they're, they're finding players or, you know, um, suspending players for chase down tackles. What are they supposed to do? You mm. can't – it's not your duty you care to protect a player. I mean, I know they say it is, but there's only so much you can do when tackling somebody. It's a contact sport. They're going to have scenarios where they're going to hit their head on the ground and you can't always do something about it. And a chase down tackle, there's nothing you can do. You're no. just running and – grabbing them from behind essentially and throwing them to the ground. So unless you're, it's a slinging motion and a dumping motion, I think that's fine for a dangerous tackle, but otherwise you've got to let it be. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to let it be. Absolutely. And then the other one that upset me this weekend was the uh, Brody Meyer check bump against, uh, I can't remember who it was, against yeah, Brisbane. Brisbane, yeah. He got he got given a week, or was it two weeks I think it was, and it was two weeks he got given for a bump because um, he collect, collected someone head high. I want to know on what grounds they gave that two weeks – when Joel Selwood did the same thing last week, but probably worse in my eyes, and got nothing. Mm. What's the difference? I want to know where the consistency is here because yeah. what it, players don't know what they can and can't do when it's this inconsistent. You're not stopping someone from going for a bump when you look at Joel Selwood, one of the game's most iconic players, see him get away with it, and you go, oh, well, that's all right, that's fine to do. He got away with it. Why can't we all? And then you see more, you're going to see more players get hurt yeah. because of it. It's... Regardless of being suspended, more players are going to get hurt because other players are going to think they can get away with these yeah, things. 100%. So there's my little rant about the MRO again, and it wouldn't surprise me if there's another one next week because they're just getting it mm. so wrong. Well, imagine this happens in a final series. You know, teams get absolutely shafted and or, – well, yeah, they, they get shafted not just from their own players getting suspended, but uh, a player on the other – like a team that they're meant to play doesn't get rubbed out for something they should have. So it's – I feel like there's something more – that's going to come out of this season with the MRO and that's going to be in the finals and it's going to cost someone. Absolutely. Or in, in saying that, someone could be concussed and miss yeah, a game. Exactly. And someone misses a flag or misses playing in a grand final. Jeez, I'm... You're choking up over that. It's upsetting <laughs> me. I can't handle it. 
Imagine if someone, yeah, doesn't play in a grand final because they got concussed from a bump like that that everybody else has gotten away with this mm. year. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, yep. you're right. I think something will come from it. And it's sad that they're waiting for something bad to happen before they make any change. But yep. that's what it's come to. Yeah, absolutely. All right, let's move on to the final round of the home and away season. Can you believe we're here? She's talking about choking up. I'm choking up about being at the end of the season. This has come so quickly. It's just ridiculous how quick it's gone. I mean, I know we say it every week, but it only feels like yesterday when we played each other round one. Well, we've now gotten through, as a Pressure Point podcast, two seasons of football. We have. Once yeah. this round finishes. Yeah, crazy. Two home and away rounds, I should yeah. say. We haven't got finals yet, but... How crazy is that? It's crazy. It's We're crazy. Episode sixty nine. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so, but yeah, round twenty three all starts Friday night. Western Bulldogs, Port Adelaide, Marvel Stadium, huge game. Massive for the Bulldogs. If yep. they are dead set about playing um, finals and having that double chance, they have to pull out all the stops here against Port Adelaide, who are in great form at the moment. And I'm going to go Port Adelaide. I think. I think they're just in better form and the dogs look like they've just dropped off a notch and unless they can turn that around, I reckon Port will get them. Yeah, Port are looking fantastic. Um, so I think I'm going to go Port Adelaide as well. The Bulldogs, uh, they need a win. They just need to win because, and yeah, I mean, they're a team that really can't afford to rest players because they need to finish in that top four if they want to win the flag. So, um, but yeah, I think Port as well. Saturday Arvo, Richmond Hawthorne. MCG dead rubber. Yeah, that's 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 the probably the best way to describe it, it. Dead rubber. We talked about this before we recorded, and you were saying you were tipping Hawthorne. And to be honest with you, I'm honestly the same. The, the form that they've been in the last few weeks, and it's clear they're doing it for Clarkson. I think that that's apparent. There's no way you can play a pretty shocking foot. They were very down all year, and then all of a sudden Clarko announces that he's leaving, and you pull these wins yeah. out of your ass, and you beat the Bulldogs as well. Not just yeah. bad teams. Um, they're just in great form at the moment. And like you said, Richmond just looks slow and depleted. I'm going to go Hawks as much as it pains me to say. It. I reckon the Hawks will probably pinch us. Yeah, Richmond let me down last week in the tipping, so I am not giving them a chance this weekend. I'm going Hawks as well. Uh, Sydney, Gold Coast at Marvel Stadium. Uh, Ten minutes after the Richmond Hawthorne game starts. Yes, it's an interesting fixture in here. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. But, um, I mean, geez, you don't see Sydney losing this, do you? No. Nah. No, they'll... Uh, Mutual venue. Yeah, Gold Coast were pretty ordinary last week as well. So, yeah, I think Sydney as well for mine. Uh, later that day, we've got Brisbane and West Coast at the Gabba. I think the Lions... Jeez, I, I, I wanted West Coast to win this one to pinch Essendon's final spot, but uh, it won't happen. Won't it happen. won't happen. I'm going the Lions at the Gabba. They're in some decent form yeah, as well at the moment. They're and looking good. If anything, they can they can potentially push into the uh, the top four of the Bulldogs yeah. have a loss. So they'd be playing for everything at the moment to get that double chance. So, yeah, I'm going to go the Lions. Yeah, Lions as well. Uh, Saturday night, we've got Geelong Melbourne at GMHBA. This will be a ripper. Could be the grand final. This, this, is, this is the big one. This is the big one. I'm going the Ds here. I know it's a GMHBA, which usually puts everything in Geelong's favour. But Geelong have been in shaky form, I think, in the last couple of weeks. And... Despite them only sitting two points behind Melbourne in the ladder, I think Melbourne have hit their form at the right time and are playing some seriously good football, and they're looking dangerous. So I'm going to go for the uh, the uh, underdog here and go Melbourne. Yep. I think Dees as well. That uh, No home fans at GMHBA could be a big factor in that one. Um, also on Saturday night, we've got Carlton and GWS. GWS quite comfortably there. Yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted me to add to that. No, sorry. No. Yeah, Giants as well. They're looking too good at the moment. I don't see anybody beating yeah. them right now. Obviously, Eddie Betts' is last game and he's 350th. But clearly it doesn't matter to them. They uh, didn't show up for Murph. So, Giants. Uh, Sunday, Arvo, we've got St Kilda and Frio uh, at 12.15. That's so funny. No, I just <laughs> I love your passion, mate. I love your passion. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Saints Freo, Sunday Arvo, 12.15. That's an early one. It is like an early it. one on a Sunday. It's good, mm. though, because, I mean, some people argue that the later time slots aren't great on a Sunday because people mm. have work the next day. But I don't mind the early time slots. Something different. Um, yet to be confirmed where it is, um, which ground. It will be in Victoria, though, I yep. believe. But, um, I mean, yeah, I've got to go Freo here. Freo are looking too good at the moment. I think mathematically there's still a chance as well. So, I mean, they'll be giving themselves every chance and hoping some results go their way. Yeah. So the I'm going to go Freo. Saints look good, though, on the weekend. Saints did look good, but Freo did look yeah, equally they did. good. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's, that's a really hard one to pick. But, um, yeah, I think I might go Freo just, just because of their great win. And, yeah, as I said, it keeps them mathematically alive. But, geez, that's, that's really clutching at straws. Um, Essendon Collingwood at the MCG later that day. We couldn't have given Essendon the big rap we did and then tip yeah. against them, can no, we? No, Bomber's easy. Yeah, here, I reckon. Will, Bombers will clinch this one nicely. Yeah. And then the final game of the season is Adelaide and North Melbourne at the Adelaide Oval. The which Wayne I think Kerry Cup. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I think this will be a good game. It will one. be a good game, bottom of the ladder. Yeah. Both teams going at it. Well, North actually officially have the wooden spoon now after their loss on the weekend. But people are saying they're probably the best wooden spoon team ever. I think they are. Yeah. Yeah. I think they will be. And I reckon they'll get, they'll get Adelaide. Yep. I reckon they're a better side. They, they should have beaten a lot of teams above them at the moment that they mm. haven't and they've only just lost, and I reckon they'll pinch Adelaide. Yeah, I think they will win as well. All right, that's it. Jeez, that's, that's sad. Home it's and away sad. season done. It is uh, <sighs> it is sad, but finals are bloody exciting. They're looming, and yep. I'll tell you what, it's going to be the first uh, September in a couple of years that I haven't been stressed out, and I think it'll be good to take a step back and have a watch of the finals and appreciate... Finals football for what it is, the excitement machine that it, it can turn into. It's so. going to be very weird for you, isn't it? What? Is it 2016, the last time you went in the finals? It was Yeah, last time we weren't, yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. 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 It's been a while now. But even before that. Yeah, but I don't count those years. So really? 13, 14, 15, I don't you've count. You've only missed the finals once since 2013, 12, 2012. Yeah. It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. But when you look at the losses we had in 2013, 14, and 15, you almost don't want to count. Yeah. We lost to a team that shouldn't have been there in 2013. Which team was that? I'm not going to remind you. If you don't know, you don't know. 2014, <laughs> Port Adelaide demolished us, and I cried. And that's fact. I yep. genuinely cried watching that game. And in the, the year after that, in 2015, we lost to North Melbourne. Mm. Um, that's right. Jared White. Jared White. Tore you apart. He did. Jared White tore us apart, and there wasn't anything we could have done or stopped him that day. He was yeah. unreal. And then we finished 13th in 2016 and looked garbage. So, yeah, yeah I don't count those three years. But, yeah, you're yeah. right. If you look at it in hindsight, we've done pretty well to yeah. only miss finals once since so 2012. It's going to be weird then for you, this final series. It will be weird. Yeah. It will be weird. So. Well, we're still a chance. Don't run us <laughs> off. We're still a mathematical chance. Yeah, start resting some players this weekend just in case. Just in case we make it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> All right, well, uh, that is this episode done. Um, as we say every week, make sure you leave us a review. Subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify. Um, review us. All the support is greatly appreciated, and we can't thank you guys enough. Um, make sure you listen to our interview that we had with Ben Waterworth the other day from Fox Footy. It was a fantastic interview. Make sure you listen to that one as well. The Fox Footy team are really looking after us at the moment. They've been great. We're absolutely uh, real and thrilled, the Fox yeah. Footy uh, Studios at the moment. So they're loving us and we're loving them and they've given us some great content and being big fans of the show as well, which is really greatly yep. appreciated. No, they're doing really good and, yeah, we, we love and they're big fans of the show. Um, but, yes, enjoy round 23, the final round of the season, and we'll, uh, we'll chat next week. <laughs>